handmade umbrellas or brollies built to last for decades. Brogues that cost 6,000 euros. Bespoke suits made of the finest fabrics. Items made by small businesses robust enough to outlive economic crisis and rise above passing trends. Horst A. Friedrichs tells their story in his book, Best of British. The book isn't just about style, it's about how things are made. I'm actually a photojournalist, and I've always had an interest in factories. As a small boy, I loved visiting factories and taking pictures of the manufacturing process and meeting the workers. Putting together Best of British was an amazing trip. One that took him to St. James Street in London, home to one of the world's oldest hatters, James Lock & Co, established in the 1660s. The shop calls itself the birthplace of the bowler hat, the most British of accessories. Originally meant for the gamekeepers and called the Coke Hat, it became known as the Bowler because it was designed by London hat makers Thomas and William Bowlers. A well-fitted bowler hat should never pinch. At Locks & Co, master hatters still use a confirmateur to measure the shape of the customer's head and then use a series of century-old techniques to create the perfect tailored hat. The bowler hat is over 160 years old. It's had many famous fans. One of the most loyal was Charlie Chaplin. When you buy a lock bowler, it comes with kind of a lifetime guarantee. So you can bring the hat back and we'll steam it, we'll re-block it, we'll take care of it for you. Um, so it should last a lifetime. All the manufacturers featured in Friedrich's book are at least 100 years old. James Smith & Sons make traditional English umbrellas. Friedrichs has to wait a year for permission to document the production process. The wooden-handled brollies cost up to 3,500 euros. There used to be far more umbrella makers in London. Many shut down in the 1980s. Friedrichs wants to show how much work goes into these handsome handcrafted items and how special the places they're made in are too. In Germany, manufacturing has become very sterile. Here in England and Scotland, we found ourselves opening up drawers that probably hadn't been opened for a hundred years. We found great stuff in those drawers. And, of course, we photographed all of it for the book. The brands he chose to profile are all traditional, pricey and timeless. But that doesn't mean time has stood still for these companies. Scottish raincoat manufacturer Macintosh is now Japanese-owned. Barber now produces much of its outerwear outside the UK to cut costs, though its classic waxed cotton jackets are still made in Britain. Still, fashion journalist Simon Crompton, who wrote the book's text, believes that Britain's garment industry is still in good shape because good old-fashioned craftsmanship is especially in demand. A designer or an owner who is still faithful to the how the product was produced in the first place. I think that's absolutely crucial. Um, what destroys that heritage is if you get an owner, as happens to a lot of Italian brands, who buy it and folks on the design side don't really care about the manufacturing anymore. On London's famous Savile Row, they're dedicated to upholding the art of traditional bespoke tailoring. Royal warrant holders Anderson and Shepherd had their shop here until 2004. But falling demand meant they had to move and downsize. Prince Charles had his suits made here. Anderson and Shepherd used to be an exclusive club. It frowned on marketing and only tailored garments for people who'd received a recommendation from a regular customer. The um, traditional buggy label um, on a Savile Row jacket is on the inside of the pocket because you don't want anybody to know where your clothes are made because you don't want anybody to look as good as you do. So it's all those things that I think have, obviously, as a, as a, as a kind of mindset, have evolved. These days, Anderson and Shepherd even advertises abroad to attract customers willing to pay upward of €6,000 for a suit. And the campaign has been a success. The order books are full. The tailors here even wear bespoke suits at work. 
Their customers expect the very best, as artist Pablo Picasso and actress Marlena Dietrich did in the past. It's that polish. Whether it's a leather jacket or a well-worn shoe, it just looks better. Well-made products just get better and look better over time. Horst A. Friedrichs ends his tour at a place with plenty of polish, at shoemaker John Lobb. Customers should expect a six-month wait for their custom-made shoes. In the meantime, they can enjoy looking at the lasts from famous customers of bygone days. Friedrich's book isn't just about the best of British apparel. It also contains plenty of personal stories.